Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Before we begin, I'd like to ask all of you listening in at home tonight to tell us in a comment below what kind of inside joke moments you've had in real life outside of D&D. With that being said, DMs of Reddit, what was an event in your D&D campaign that quickly became an inside joke amongst your peers? Part 1. You gave us a boss we couldn't kill, so we killed it. And the dreaded mouse. The first was based off an encounter we had with the master of a wizarding university. We weren't supposed to attack him, instead have him as our greatest ally. But the tieflings attacked him, stuff happened. I froze him in space using graviturgy, didn't kill him, and then I used unseen servant and graviturgy to stop his Heart. We weren't supposed to kill him, but I did. The dreaded mouse is a different story. My character has a mouse. As a joke, the DM started giving it a load of funny titles, and the like. Soon it became the dreaded mouse in boots of the pantry, conqueror of old cabbages and biscuits, terror of the cheese bank. The coffee machine incident. A homebrew spell that was basically the Wabajack allowed me to use it as a conduit for said spell. From what I remember, we turned the engine of the ship into cheese, turned multiple orcs into exploding chickens, some vanished from existence, they were sent outside of reality, some had the fireball be thrown at them as boiling water. 88 orcs were killed that day. That spell was promptly reworked, and while it does exist, it's a 10th level spell now. I have a half-elf rogue assassin in my campaign. She plays her characters with a bit of realism, and as such, any full day of murdering slash adventuring etc. leaves you fairly gross. Therefore, at the end of each day, she declares she will be taking a bath and trance in the thickest British accent she can muster. Once she got tongue-tied while trying to say this, and it basically came out as BOTH AND DRA. So now any time my party gets to the end of the day, we each shout, BOTH AND TRANS! BOTH AND TRANS! BOTH AND TRANS! Both and trans. With increasing degrees of ineligibility like blithering idiots. Ah, it's the best. Had a party member get really drunk in character and started making a lot of jokes that were getting really thin. Rogue had the idea to put caltrops in this guy's bed, hoping for a funny moment of having a drunk ranger have to pick all the caltrops out of his bed, sort of like briars or thorns. Instead, before the DM can even explain what he sees on his bed, the ranger goes, I jump in face first and dive onto my bed. The DM even gave him the whole, are you sure? And was about to explain that his bed looked different before the ranger enthusiastically said, <laughs> Yes, my character is drunk and just wants to go to sleep immediately. The DM sighed and started to roll damage for the caltrops. He got healed up later, but everyone started packing caltrops if only to laugh at the memory. The rogue took this a bit farther by placing caltrops in innocuous locations in the ranger's line of sight. He never did this in any matter to harm the ranger, just enough to remind us all of the incident. Not DM, but player. My character, ASMR Cleric, was playing with a split personality. One an idiot, the other was a noble gentleman. ASMR are stupid rare in this world, so no one knew what I was. We had to cross this landlord sea. As we stepped on the ship, the female fighter asked me what I was. I just got my wings, we flavored it as bolts of lightning, cause I was a Tempest Domain Cleric. I asked the DM if I can roll for seasickness. I rolled a nat 1. Cue the projectile vomit. The female fighter had to roll to dodge the puke, that player also got a nat 1. So she is now covered in puke, I'm on the floor of the boat with such a case of seasickness that I got a trait called Supreme Seasickness. Our warlock used prestidigitation to clear up the fighter and pissed off the fighter by making her smell like lavender, which the fighter hated. Not me as the DM, but a campaign I played with a lizard folk forge cleric who always chopped off the limbs of fallen foes and ate them. One time, I did that to the bugbear in the beginning of Lost Minds, and our dragonborn barbarian punched me KO with a nat 20. After we defeated a young black dragon, one of my fellow party members wanted to roll for dramatic entrance into a throne room. He rolled a 6. So the DM decided to play the theme to curb your enthusiasm to express mediocrity. 
However, we instead heard, Here's Mountain Dew Zero Sugar from that Shining commercial with Brian Cranston. We still joke about it outside of D&D and often buy Mountain Dew Zero whenever we get together. In my first campaign I've ever played in, my character was a human wizard named Delkesh. He tried numerous times to seduce various females he came across, all with varying degrees of failure. It became so much a part of his character that we all just accepted that he was never going to find comfort in a woman's arms. The one time he actually got a date, he was disguised as an elf. And then he got royally cock-blocked by an NPC in the party who decided to steal the Thieves' Guild leader's ring and thus had the entire Thieves' Guild trying to find and kill us. So he had to leave before he could go on the date. Oh, that's really sad. I'm a DM running Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Spoilers for Dragon Heist. In my party, I have a Warforged Armorer Artificer, a Troll Kin Pact of the Fiend Warlock, a Kobold Thief Rogue, and a Tiefling Necromancer Wizard. This story focuses on the Artificer. So when the party entered the vault, they were exploring the area where they came across three bridges that looked like they were going to fall. So with some clever use of the jump spell and the floating disc, they skipped the bridges where they found two adamantine doors. The artificer did the math and the door weighs three tons, which is worth seven million gold pieces. So me and the artificer have the meme of doors. Bloody doors. I was running a modified version of the Death House from Ravenloft. I used the maps, but changed the encounters inside to fit with what was happening in my own campaign. Before, we had an erasable map to use for drawing dungeons. I would print off whatever maps we needed, and we would just use smaller tokens to keep track of everyone. I didn't realize that the map I printed off was slightly less detailed than the one that I was using for my notes, and lacked things like furniture. I turned one of those rugs in a room into an animated object that would attack the first person to step on it. It was shown on my map, but not the party's map. When the party got attacked by the rug, they said there was no rug on the map and were very confused. After realizing what happened and explaining it to the party, they started asking if every room had a rug in it. Now, even with a different player DMing for us, we still ask if there are rugs and are suspicious about any we find. So far, 75% of rugs have tried to kill us in some way. To grab someone by the ankles as you would a woman. <laughs> what? Excuse me? This joke started in our jaunt through the Curse of Strahd campaign in Argonvast Hold. It was quiet after our encounter with a large number of giant spiders, so we took the opportunity to explore. We found ourselves in a room full of statues of various people. So, naturally, our dragonborn barbarian decides he wants to pick up one to carry around with him. The DM asks him to make an athletics check, and he rolls not a nat 20, but still very high. And so the DM goes on to describe, Okay, so you grab the statue by its ankles as you would a woman. <laughs> and hoist it up over your shoulder. There is a short moment of silence as the group processes what the DM just said, before we all start laughing. There was a lot of jests and jokes and teasing before we settled back into our rhythm. Since then, whenever one of our characters picks up someone or whatever, we will make the joke of grabbing them by the ankles as you would a woman. Death by Glitter Yes, the name is exactly how it sounds, a player's character died by glitter. The player get their character put in jail because it was a zombie they kill and looted earlier. They did not know the zombies were important to the town. A story for another time. And, well, they got put into jail and the punishment was cleaning a room of glitter. The player had their character eat the glitter. I was not even expecting that, to be honest. I had them roll a con save. They pass. Then made them make another con save. They passed. I made them roll another con save, and they had this stipulation of if they roll high enough, their character dies. I was hoping they would roll low, but nope, they roll high. So they made a new character. One of my players has really bad rolls when he gets magical items. So half of them are cursed, and on top of it, it's always the same curse. The items are possessed by either a demon or a vengeful spirit against something oddly specific. So every time he gets a new item, everyone says, Hello, current demon. What is your dexterity number? As he has enough evil spirits and demons to fill a Pokedex. So, for context, we had just started playing a new campaign, and I was introducing the scene as a classroom. One dude just asked, Ah, uh, yo, can I roll for dex? 
and I said yes, he used it to shoot a pencil into the ceiling and yell in the class at the top of his lungs, Yo, where are the white women at? <laughs> and now, every time we're in a stealth segment or entering, like, a church or funeral, roll strength and dex to fire or throw a pencil and yell, Where are the white women at? Yo! TLDR. Every sad or serious moment that they enter has this human ranger shoot and yell, Where are the white women at? Butters Bear Butters was the name of a Goliath paladin who owned a bear. His oath was questionable, he didn't listen during sessions, and had a bear he forgot about. Aw. On the rare occasion when he said to use his bear, it was to ride it from point A to point B. But there was no point since that party already had a large cart with the warlock's giant lizard towing it. It became such a joke that we kept saying it probably died of hunger or left to become the lord of the forest. After the player was kicked out, it still became a gag as it was the only thing memorable about the character apart from only doing the same thing each time in his combat turn, which was to use his axe. The player made it seem that non-magical classes were so boring as everyone else were magic casters. It is still hilarious to this day. So there's an ongoing about the fact that I, Paladin, follow the tenets of conquest and the god in specific is what we think is funny. The DM essentially said that the god of conquest looks like the Allstate General. <laughs> so I put a picture of him in my room. <laughs> Eventually we go to the Hall of Gods to ask multiple gods of the whereabouts of an NPC that our other party member had a relationship with. None of them knew, she learned she was half god, and she also cousins with another player's character, and just found out due to the god of life explaining this to them. While I was there, my dragon arm named Odvin at a flower, and so the god of life reacted with, I hope you weren't planning on visiting that world. There were a bunch of Tarasks, tiny ones, I asked if I could take one in a jar. However, we were a lot larger in the god realm than the main dimension, so he didn't let me. Then I had a brilliant idea. While in the Hall of Gods, I went to the Allstate General's mansion <laughs> and asked him for a tiny car that was also functional, and so he gave me it. What the DM forgot was that he himself said that we were larger in the god realm, so when we got back, I had a full-sized car that was essentially, insert title card, because earlier on my skin got all burned off, and I asked the general if I had leg insurance since it was my mode of transportation and he allowed my skin to grow back. So my party member tries to break the car with her warhammer, but then it says, For a great low rate that you can get online, go to the general and save some time! And fixes itself. <laughs> Edit, TLDR, the Allstate general accidentally gave me an indestructible car. <laughs> ah, no. Hey everyone, Brian here checking in after the vid. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell so you can be notified whenever we post a new video or go live. If you'd like to submit a story, please do so on our subreddit r slash Ripper, and to follow us on Twitter and Twitch, links are in the description below. And of course, using a help action, stop on by my channel Brian Von VA on YouTube where I make memes, voice your D&D characters, and stream games. All the love everyone, please stay safe out there and make sure to take care of yourselves during all this chaos. I know a lot of you are getting restless, but keep wearing your masks, and when you go out and about, please be safe. It's okay to go out for a walk in the park, or to visit a gym or a bookstore, and all that jazz. So, just do it, and be safe while you're at it too. All the love everyone, I'll see you next time, bye for now.